name is Mark Raab. I'm the director of the Heidelberg Myeloma Center in Germany. And um, I have the pleasure to summarize our study report uh, that we presented at this year's EHA meeting in Madrid in early June to you um, and summarize, as I said, the data which uh, was shown at the meeting. As uh, you may have heard, uh, the induction therapy in frontline uh, patients with newly diagnosed myeloma and who are eligible for transplant, hydrotherapy and transplant, um, is evolving. And we have uh, recently, a few years ago, uh, started with this first quadruplet uh, with daratumumab, uh, bortezomib, thalidomide and dexamethasone, which is approved in Europe and um, also, I think, approved um, in most other countries. Um, and uh, always there was a question whether thalidomide or lenalidomide is uh, the best combination partner. I know in the US, uh, VRD is widely used um, since a long time. And so several trials have now addressed this question, whether the VRD backbone um, can be proved by the addition of a CD38 antibody. In this trial, we have used uh, the CD38 antibody isotaximab um, in combination with what is called RVD here. This is the same combination as VRD, it's just a little bit different schedule in terms of weekly dosing uh, distribution over a cycle. Uh, previously, a few years ago, we showed that after the induction therapy, the first 18 weeks of uh, therapy, and there was a superiority, higher rate of uh, MRD negativity. So as, as deep as we can dig, so to say, we didn't find any myeloma cells with this technique. Um, and uh, as you can see here, 50% were negative after uh, the induction therapy and 35% uh, in the control arm. So this is the study design. I will very briefly summarize uh, it uh, again. Um, here, the control, ar uh, the control arm is RVD, as I said, uh, lenalimid, bortezomib, dexamethasone, uh, one-to-one -one randomization against uh, isotaximab RVD, followed by hard therapy and stem cell transplant, here now called intensification part, and then uh, the maintenance phase, which is uh, followed uh, of which is following after a second randomization. However, those results are still pending. Um, we here now focus on the MRD negativity, so this very, very deep response after the intensification phase, as you can see here, including, of course, the induction therapy and now the intensification phase, hydrotherapy therapy and autologous stem cell transplant. Patient characteristics were very well balanced between the two arms. And if there was a little imbalance, then it was more in disfavor of the uh, isotoximab arm. So certainly not overestimating any results that we may see. Um, patient who discontinued were relatively few, as you can see here, 12 versus 17%, um, who dropped out, so to say, before uh, in, uh, end of uh, this intensification phase. Um, and you can see as well here that this was distributed among the two arms quite equally um, with very few patients who did not comply or who withdraw consent. So overall, this was obviously very well tolerated and most patients, by far most patients, reached this step. The response rates in terms of outcome, as you can see here, um, the deep response, VGPR, and the very deep response upon uh, CR, complete response, were clearly higher in those patients who had the quadruplet, who had the, received the addition of azotoximab compared to the control arm. And more, most importantly, probably the very, very deep response, the MRD negativity was much higher in those patients who had the isotaximab antibody in the induction phase before the intensification um, uh, compared to those who did not receive the isotaximab uh, antibody during the induction phase. And this, again, these uh, rates here are now assessed after end of intensification. So all those patients have had the chance to undergo high-dose therapy and stem cell transplant. 
Again, those patients uh, who received, uh, who achieved a VGPR, so a deep response, um, showed a higher MRD negativity rate. And those who achieved a CR, a complete response, also had a much higher MRD negativity rate compared to those who did not um, receive the uh, CD38 antibody as a taximab. Among the subgroup analyses, so patients, uh, patient groups with certain factors like risk factors, you can see here all those dots and those bars where the dot is on the right side of this dashed line uh, means that uh, those patient groups benefited in principle from those uh, four drugs, from this addition of isotaximab to the backbone RVD. Um, and you see that none of those dots is on the left side of this dashed line. So that means all subgroups benefited at least to some extent from these uh, four drugs versus the three drug RVD backbone with one exception of a small patient cohort here, the R ISS stage three, which is the most high risk patient group, usually highly aggressive disease. There you see only a slight benefit and this is not statistically significant. However, for sure it was not uh, of a, a dismal outcome. So they certainly um, had uh, some benefit, but not as much as the other subgroups here. Um, and uh, interestingly, uh, gain 1Q, so one of the risk markers, as you can see here, um, the ones with the risk marker did maybe even slightly better uh, compared to the control arm comp uh, as those uh, than those uh, without the this risk marker. Um, if we look briefly on those patients who actually received high dose therapy because uh, in the previous analysis I showed you just a, a minute ago, it was all patients who have started the trial but might have dropped out in between due to adverse events or due to other uh, complications. Um, but those who have actually completed high dose therapy uh, part, you see that again here the uh, difference and the improvement of the MRD negativity rate is again uh, very high. So meaning this is not just because more patients in the control arm have stopped therapy or have left the trial and uh, would have then led to a better outcome in the in the experimental arm, in the ESA RVD arm, but this is actually uh, the same uh, in patients who actually completed the intensification phase. And then finally, if we show uh, or look at patients who actually were after the MRD, uh, were after the intensification phase um, MRD negative and who were MRD negative already after the high dose, uh, after the intensification, after the induction phase, I'm sorry, after the index induction phase, we see that most of those patients um, who were negative after the induction phase remained also MRD negative after intensification, uh, intensification phase. Even more though, uh, patients who were still positive, so ha who have not achieved uh, MRD negative rate after the uh, induction phase, uh, more patients in the um, isatoximab arm then converted, reached MRD negativity compared to those who only got the standard therapy RVD, uh, despite having received the same therapy in between, basically. So summarizing, um, the GMMG HG7 trial um, showed higher negativity rates uh, and higher complete response rates after hydrotherapy therapy and uh, transplant um, for those patients who actually received the isatuximab RVD combination compared to the control arm patients who only received RVD. Uh, we didn't see any new safety issues or any new uh, unexpected adverse event rates um, compared to what is known for the uh, for those combination therapies. Um, I just mentioned that more patients converted to MRD negativity after the high dose therapy if they had previously received as a taximab compared to the control arms, of course. And finally, this page, uh, trial is, of course, ongoing and uh, will specifically address the role of the anti antibody, in this case, as a taximab in combination with lenalumid 
um, compared to lenalidomide control arm. So with this, I think this is a very positive trial and feeds into uh, other results with other antibodies that have previously been shown now to be superior as a quadruplet compared to a triplet in transplant eligible newly diagnosed patients. Thank you very much.